Well, tonight, we're holding the powerful accountable on a proposed constitutional amendment on the ballot in the November election. It would get rid of an independent watchdog agency that po polices the state's judges. That agency has forced dozens of Georgia judges to resign, including a man who is now a powerful state representative. But the only public evidence showing that he sexually harassed a female attorney in his courtroom disappeared until our chief investigator, Brendan Keefe, hunted it down. This document contains words so damning they took down two judges. He leaned in to give me a hug and crammed his tongue in my mouth. He would tell me to wear my pants a little tighter in court. He was Johnny Caldwell, the former district attorney elevated to superior court judge in the Griffin Judicial Circuit. The woman testifying was a lawyer in the judge's courtroom. If I wanted an order signed in my favor, I needed to come to his office and take down my pants and at least let him look at it if I wasn't going to let him touch it. Some of the sexual comments in this transcript are so graphic we can't repeat them on television. Allegations that ended Caldwell's career as a judge, but not his political power. The testimony remains the only public record of what happened behind closed doors in the judge's chambers. We went to the Fayette County Courthouse and immediately found the electronic entry transcript 62510. But the paper court records told a different story. There was a folder labeled transcript 62510, but inside only an addendum listing the courtroom exhibits from that day. The testimony detailing graphic sexual allegations against Judge Caldwell was missing. We contacted the official stenographer for a copy. We can pay for a new transcript to be created from the court reporter's record. She replied, since you are not a party to the hearing, you are unable to request that they be transcribed. I replied, a document painting a former judge in a bad light has mysteriously vanished from the building where that judge once served. She replied, the only thing the clerk of court's files show from that day is a transcript of exhibits, not a transcript of testimony. So I went back to the clerk of court. What about that entry I saw, transcript 62510? It was gone. Computer records obtained by the 11 Alive investigators show the six-year-old entry in a closed case was changed the day after we asked for a copy, erasing the word transcript from the electronic docket. So I went back to the paper file. The folder labeled transcript 62510 was still there, but then I noticed something strange. All the other transcripts in the same case had sequential page numbers starting on page two. But the addendum of exhibits from the day of the missing sexual harassment testimony started at page 237. We can only conclude that pages one through 236 are missing from the court record. The docket has been altered. There was no reply from the court reporter until the next day, when without explanation she wrote, the transcript has been located. You may now obtain a copy for yourself. Not one, but two certified copies of the previously missing transcript suddenly appeared in a drawer that had been empty during our earlier visits. The wrong case number was typed on the front and it had been misfiled with a totally unrelated case. Inside those lost pages, the sexually charged allegations that brought judicial ethics investigators to this courthouse six years earlier. Judge Caldwell abruptly stepped down, writing in his resignation letter to the governor that he wanted to spend more time with his grandchildren and promising to the Judicial Qualifications Commission investigator that he would never run for judge again. He didn't. Instead, he ran for higher office from the courthouse to the state house and now representative johnny caldwell is trying to dismantle the judicial qualifications commission itself going after the same watchdog agency that went after him you're stripping an independent constitutionally mandated watchdog agency out of the constitution and putting it to the complete whim uh, of, of the politicians. Lester Tate was the chair of the Judicial Qualifications Commission. He resigned after Johnny Caldwell and five other reps co-sponsored legislation to abolish the JQC. It was introduced by at least one judge who resigned while being investigated. Representative Caldwell walked out of his own Judiciary Committee minutes before a hearing on bills he co-sponsored, where lawmakers talked about judges like him who were forced to resign. An amendment to the Constitution 
so as to abolish the existing Judicial Qualifications Commission. In the House chamber, while a candidate for judge recused himself, former Judge Caldwell did not. He voted yay, asking voters to amend the Georgia Constitution to create a new commission answering to state lawmakers like him. Is it like me getting pulled over for speeding and then getting elected mayor and firing the police chief? It's a political dumpster fire, and the only way that dumpster fire gets put out is if the people of the state of Georgia realize what's going on, go to the ballot box and vote no. Representative Caldwell responded to our investigation of the sexual harassment case, writing, I accepted responsibility for making a mistake. Since then, I've tried to move forward with my life and make my family and my friends proud of me. The former judge said he knew nothing about that missing file. You can read the full statement right now on 11alive.com.